How to measure mulch. How do you measure mulch in your landscaping business? Come with me. On this property right now, we're installing three yards of sh double shredded black hardwood mulch. How much do you charge, but how do you measure it? Come this way. So, I've done everything from one yard up to 190 yards of mulch, which would be five full semi truck loads with 10 guys to install mulch. But there's been times after five years of doing this where I've said, how am I still doing this wrong? I, we didn't order enough mulch or we ordered too much mulch. And I could never get it spot on because sometimes, you, you, here's, here's why. Okay, so a yard of mulch covers between 100 and 140 square feet at two inches. Where's the difference of 40 square feet? Well, it depends on the blend of the mulch, right? This right here is a triple shred premium. So it covers more volume because it spreads out more. A double shredded mulch, especially dyed mulches that are dyed with an organic black or brown, they're thicker. The bark chips are thicker and then they don't cover as much. So in my opinion, in my experience, and I want to know in the comments below, I'm asking you too, where's the difference? I've ordered three yards for a property and ended up getting four or five. And I'd get upset, I'd be like, what's going on here? We're piling up this high in the garden beds. We can't do that. Because if you pile mulch around plants, you're gonna suffocate them and kill them. You want just enough. Oh, it depends on who you order it from, what yard, who's delivering it that day, like who's loading it, and what mood they're in. Shouldn't it be a consistent volume all the time, no matter what, across the board? Well, apparently it's not. Because I've ordered three yards of mulch, I've got four, I've ordered 20. That ain't no 20 yards of mulch. Get like 18. And it depends on what city you're in or what state you're in. Some mulch suppliers here in Michigan, uh, some landscape suppliers, they give you exactly one cubic yard. That's what you pay for. Another guy I go to, they give me, they just pile it on. I get 1.25 cubic yards for every yard I get. So you might get spoiled and start actually saying, okay, we only actually need nine. Um, Cause I know we're gonna get 10 and then all of a sudden something changes, right? So it's like this constant shift. Drives me nuts. So here, what's the two inches all about? 100 square feet at two inches. How do you measure that? Well, you can get a measuring wheel and you can actually go across and do all the math on every single property. And I think you should if you're just getting started. But it gets to the point where your brain just figures it out. What is, what are the dimensions of these garden beds minus the plant materials and spacing? Come over here. Look how much space this plant takes up. If you've got a thin line like this that goes all the way along, that doesn't literally take as much, much as, uh, mulch as you think it would. But when you have a huge wide open garden bed, right, and it's on a radius, a curve, there's berms, like pine trees, right? It'll eat up twice the amount of mulch than you were anticipating because when there's a berm like this, the mulch will fill up and it has to pack to build the base before it gets up to the top. So it's always a little bit thicker at the bottom, just a little bit, just like decorative stone. And then, uh, not too much, just a little, but then if you take the radius of that bermed out garden bed, if you were to flatten that out, look at the difference. It's actually a lot more, see? It looks small, but when you flatten it out, there's just more square footage. That's all there is. So think about what is the radius of the garden, I mean, what is what is the, does the garden bed have a curve on it, right? Is it a berm? Um, another thing is, I'm trying to keep this really simple here. There's, there's something really costly and frustrating, like all this mulch right here we're putting down at two inches. This is two full yards right here that we put down at two inches because we got about 18 by 35. I just call it two yards, right? I'm not gonna sit here and measure. When you have to go back to the landscape supplier and you have to eat it, like that's really unprofessional and knock on your customer's door and be like, oh, we need more, uh, more, more money, more mulch, we undercoat it. Dude, that's your fault. You should, you should have to eat that and learn your lesson. Because what, what if you get a job that requires 100 yards of mulch? 
Are you going to tell the customer we messed up by $3,000 or something like that? So I can't tell you how many times I've had to go back to the landscape supplier in the middle of a job and go get more mulch on my dime and eat it over and over and over and over. So what I did, I got paranoid. I started ordering more mulch and now we're taking mulch off of the job sites because there's too much dang mulch. So it's the constant battle. <laughs> it's the constant battle with my dollar store sunglasses and mulch. I chalk it up to one out of every 20 jobs there's a mistake. If you have any ideas in the comments below of how you can perfectly quote mulch every single time, because I tell you I've probably done over 2,000 mulch jobs, and still I know for a fact this year I'm either going to get too much or I'm going to get too little. So mulch is uh, $120 per yard over here. That's installed. So I include the delivery fee in that. It was 65, then 75, 85, 95, 100, 110. Now this year it's 120. Uh, prepping garden beds. We don't prep the bed edges. That's a man hour. It's 65 dollars per man hour. So here uh, it was 45 dollars to take the garden bed edger and edge out all the customers' garden beds to prep them. So we put a nice edge on it. If they want the weeds pulled, that's garden maintenance. And that's extra, that's man hour, right? So it might be $174 or something to pull the weeds on the garden beds. Now, somebody was saying in the comments, does that include weed barrier fabric? No! Weed barrier fabric's expensive and very time consuming. So we're at $2 per square foot for weed barrier fabric installed, high quality. Um, from the landscape supplier. It's not the felt, it's the one step down from that. And then the box of the metal pins, that's like 80 bucks. So we charge double the price on the pins and $2 per yard so far. And that seems to work out because you have to go and prep all the beds and then suture and put all the weed barrier fabric and cut it all together around all the plants and make it all nice, neat and clean and cut where the sprinkler heads are. It's extremely time consuming. So you could, you can end up, <laughs> putting your foot in your mouth if you do back this way uh, weed barrier fabric and then another thing I want to say is if you're doing mulch over weed barrier fabric you're probably gonna need a good three inches of mulch because if you try to get away thin it ain't gonna work the swipe slightest little tiny tussle you're gonna see another thing is there's charcoal color weed barrier fabric there's the light gray there's the dark gray we're now getting the dark charcoal colored kind that's high quality so just in case the mulch gets moved around that three inches that you don't see this loud screaming light gray weed barrier fabric underneath right and i hate doing weed barrier fabric i absolutely hate it so but when we do weed barrier fabric i mean it's actually more expensive than the mulch itself so here we are we went around with the garden bed edger machine I got it from Echo, the PAS 225, whatever. Edged all this out. And then we're just gonna go through. We're putting a nice triple shredded black mulch. Colored mulch uh, is a little bit more expensive. Not from the supplier I get it from though. But if you have to charge more, if you have to pay more for dyed mulch, then you have to charge more for it. up here um, and the only reason we got the mulch uh, we picked it up with my dump trailer it's usually I'd rather have it delivered because we only got three yards and it's literally right next door to the dump where we dump so it was actually more cost efficient uh, otherwise if, if there's any landscape job we do when they're in you know between five and ten thousand dollar jobs I always get the materials delivered so I can stay on the job site or be going out and getting the important materials right so that's about it and I think it's like if you get mulch delivered it's almost like having like a like an extra employee deliver it for you because it's very time consuming going to pick up materials um, oh yeah and the last thing I want to say about mulch is 
mulch is the icing on the cake. If you're doing the whole property maintenance job, if you're, it doesn't matter do what you're doing. Brick pavers, ripping out, replacing bushes, building large garden beds, putting in edging. The final thing you do once everything is done and clean up and all blown down, then you do the mulch. And then you clean up whatever's left of the mulch because if you go to clean, uh, put mulch in before anything else is done, then you're blowing and cleaning up. You're gonna blow crap all over your beautiful, nice mulch. So, mulch is the last thing. Will we do the mulch like this? I'm gonna go around before we leave here because we're spreading it out. And we run along and make a nice, it only takes about 10 minutes. But we'll go along. And we'll make it sit inside of the lip like this so it's beveled so it has a nice clean sense of delineation and separation so it's not just piled up against the edge so you can actually see that there's a garden bed and you can just go along with your hand like that i'll put a link in the description below to my mulch madness video it's a fun video uh, i did it a couple years ago all right cool that's my take on mulch and let me know in the comments below what do you charge for mulch do you prep the beds do you include bed prep what do you charge for it what do you do i love this community and i love being part of it and there's a lot of stuff that i learned from you guys in the comments so cool also these double wheelbarrows here it's really weird to control and operate but i think i'm going to get these from now on because you could just fit more and you don't have to work as hard and then also pitchforks i forgot to mention I love using a pitchfork, only use a mulch scoop shovel for the very bottom, but you can stick a pitchfork in the mulch and pull it up faster. And I'm thinking about getting this one pitchfork, it's this wide bro, but it's like $90 for this pitchfork, it's heavy, but you can get that much more mulch that much faster. A really, really big mulch job with a lot of property, we'd probably rent like a cement, like a power buggy, then fill that thing up and then just buggy it around and dump piles while guys are spreading because the bigger the property and the more you have to actually physically travel that's what's eating up all your time these big corner lots properties that are bigger travel time every time you're walking and stepping so. all right cool later